Hello everyone and welcome back. I'm Captain James Flint. I'd like to firstly thank everyone for such a warm reception into this community. It's humbling and inspiring and words cannot describe the gratitude that I have for you all. So thanks for tuning in once again. Without further delay, let's get on with episode 2, Laser Experimentals. Now that we've covered the standard modification options for laser hardpoints in Episode 1, this episode will attempt to answer that common question, what experimental effect is best for me? Now, not all experimental effects are created equal. While many only tweak or enhance a tribute slightly, others will change the behavior of the hardpoint entirely, opening up possibilities for some clever and even game-changing combinations, as well as converting strictly damage-dealing weapons into a more utility-based function. One thing to note is that many of these experimentals can be found on other types of hardpoints, not just lasers, and some can even be applied to core and optional modules as well. Let's start with the double braced experimental. This one is quite simple and merely adds a small percentage increase to integrity. The percent that's increased is based off the actual integrity after modifications are applied, so you'll get more mileage applying this on top of the sturdy mod and less results when applying to a lightweight mod. This is a good choice for hull tanks and ships that overheat frequently to allow maximum module survivability. Next up is Stripped Down. This is the inverse of Double Braced. It removes a percentage of mass and you will have more mass removed from heavier modules and less so from lighter and smaller modules. This also applies after modification changes, meaning better mileage on sturdy modules and a smaller benefit to lightweighted modules. Stripped Down is a staple of explorers everywhere. The lower the mass, the higher the jump range. Every little bit helps. Thermal shock is one of the more unique effects. It applies a small damage penalty to add an effect that increases the heat level of targets struck by these hardpoints. Thermal shock does stack, however the effectiveness of this mod relies heavily on the target's loadout and thermal efficiency, not just your own. Even with multiple thermal shock hardpoints, it can be difficult to force a target to overheat in this way. But if the target is generating high heat on its own by using hardpoints such as railguns or plasma accelerators, it's much more likely to cause heat damage over time. Unfortunately, this experimental does not cause problems for NPCs, so this is more suited towards PvP combat. Oversize is another simple experimental that's straightforward and basic. It adds a slight increase to damage and power draw after any changes from the base modification. This means that the more damage or power draw you have, the more you'll feel the effects of oversize. This is a good choice if you've got a little extra power to spare. Multi-servos is one of the extremely rare instances that I actually recommend avoiding in most cases. The power draw and DPS increase achieved is nearly identical to the changes you receive from the oversize experimental. The problem with multi-servos is how it uses an increase in fire rate to achieve the same damage increase, but with increased fire rate comes increased distributor draw and more heat gain as a byproduct, therefore rendering oversize as the superior choice. Multi-servos is not available on beam lasers as well. Flow Control is another basic mod that has basic changes, simply lowering the power draw with no other drawbacks. To be clear, this does not lower distributor draw, only the megajoule requirements from the power plant. This is great on power-hungry hardpoints and modifications, such as overcharged lasers. This one is tricky, and I chalk it up to personal preference. Phasing sequence comes with a small damage decrease, but when striking shields, it has the ability to bleed damage through shields, directly damaging the hull. The damage that bleeds through is around 12% of the damage inflicted to shields after resistances and falloff are applied. The bleed through damage does not damage modules, only hull, however it does ignore hull resistances, which technically allow you to deal hull damage with piercing and hardness having no effect. But once shields are down, you are then stuck with that damage reduction as the effect does nothing else further against just hull. Some people will argue that it's worth it, and some dispute that. Thus, I deem it a personal preference. Phasing sequence is also not available on beam lasers. Scramble Spectrum is a fun one, but it's all about luck. A strike to bare hull grants the chance for this special effect to trigger. 
Location of the strike is not important, nor does it trigger when striking a shielded target, but once applied, a random module on board the target will malfunction. Unfortunately, this will not make the target stop in its tracks if the malfunction is applied to the power plant or to thrusters, as the power plant malfunction only reduces output temporarily and thrusters behave sporadically rather than power down outright. Also, a malfunctioning life support will have no discernible reaction on the NPCs, but could perhaps incite a bit of panic on an unexpecting player. Once the malfunction has ran its course over several seconds, there is an immunity cooldown of 10 seconds that prevents further malfunctions from being applied, and this cooldown begins at the end of the previous malfunction. Also, Scramble Spectrum does not stack, making it a good choice to apply to a single hardpoint, and is another experimental not available on beam lasers. One of the two support roll experimental effects, Regeneration Sequence repairs the shields of your wingmen. This only regenerates shields that are online, not shields that are offline and recharging, and also only works on wingmen. This does not apply to friendly targets in general, but it does work on ship launch fighters, either your own or one belonging to your wingmates. Fall off and resistances do affect the regeneration rate as this mod simply inverts damage that would take away shield megajoules and instead replenishes them. This is only available on beam lasers. Concordance Sequence is the other of the two support experimentals. Concordance Sequence comes with a moderate thermal load increase but can apply a buff to your wingmates via striking their shield or a ship launch fighter that belongs to either you or a wingmate. Once applied, the target shields will gain a massive multiplier to their current regeneration rate for 12 seconds. This buff does not stack, but its timeout will restart each time it's applied. However, this buff will be removed immediately if the target receives any incoming damage whatsoever, regardless of the source. Pairs well on burst lasers or pulse lasers to conserve distributor draw while firing upon friendlies. Also great with the focus mod or long range to extend support reach when a wingmate is in trouble. The thermal conduit mod applies a sharp damage reduction up until your ship reaches dangerous heat levels. While above 100%, you gain roughly 10% additional damage output above the stock damage levels. If you increase your temperature to over 180%, you gain an even higher damage boost, all while your modules cry out in pain and melt around you. Not advisable without a large quantity of module reinforcements or for long-term engagements, and is one of the other rare exceptions that I would suggest avoiding. The penalties are just too steep a price to pay to achieve the damage output it provides. This is another beam laser exclusive. Thermal vent is one of the more popular choices and is only available on beam lasers. It's a solid choice on many builds as well. It removes heat from your ship when striking a target, be it their shields or hull. Heat dissipated is based on the distributor draw rate meaning larger beams dissipate more heat. The drawback to this mod becomes apparent when you miss your target. When firing these beams and you don't make contact with the ship, your heat levels increase more so than it would without thermal vent applied. This pairs well with overcharged, as the distributor draw increase actually helps disperse more heat than other mods. This can also be used on turrets, allowing heat dispersion without manual input, but will require situational awareness. Should your target deploy chaff, your turrets will continue firing and not make contact, generating substantial heat. This is also a great companion to ships fitted with shield cell banks. By using a cell bank at the proper time and positioning, this experimental effect can replace the need for a heat sink altogether, freeing up a utility slot. Now here's where it gets interesting. Thermal vent can actually decrease draw from your distributor if your heat level drops low enough. The weapon's capacitor actually behaves differently than the system or the engine capacitor. While the other two are simply depleted to boost or recharge shields and power some utility modules, the weapon's capacitor actually powers the cooling system of your hardpoints rather than powering the hardpoints themselves. Confused yet? You can see the result of this in practice by simply fitting an SLF with fixed beams and a heatsink. You can then observe that even with four pips to weapons, the capacitor is drained after a short time of fire. But if you deploy a heatsink, your heat level will bottom out and keep your ship extremely cold, not depleting your weapons capacitor until temperatures have risen again. So, 
with enough cooling power from thermal vents, this can keep your temperature low enough that the weapon's capacitor is drained more slowly, increasing your time to depletion. Inertial impact is up next and is exclusive to burst lasers. It's one of the more drastic experimentals that require you to actually change how you fly to utilize it successfully. Inertial impact is underestimated just as often as it's written off due to unpleasant experiences from the substantial jitter it adds. With that added jitter comes a huge 50% damage increase, which is kinetic damage on a laser. Due to the jitter introduced, it requires the laser to be used only at close range on all but the largest targets, making the perfect pairing for the short range modification to bring terrifying damage in what is basically now a laser shotgun. Be wary of the heat buildup by this combination, however, since the short range mod increases thermal load substantially. This combo pairs very well with a thermal vent beam on board also. And lastly, we have emissive munitions. This is an excellent counter to stealth ships that run cold or deploy heat sinks often. Emissive munitions doubles the thermal load generated by the hardpoint it's applied to, but grants each strike the chance to apply a debuff that forces their heat signature to go way up without changing their heat levels. This keeps the target on radar throughout its duration, even when heat sinks are deployed or if they have activated silent running. Each strike has a chance to apply the debuff again, resetting the timer. Contrary to some rumors out there, this experimental does not aid, counter, or improve the standard gimbal and turret wobble whatsoever. And emissive munitions can only be found on pulse lasers in the laser category. It can be found, however, on other types of hardpoints. That's it for episode two. Thanks for tuning in once again. Be on the lookout for episode three coming soon. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank Commander Burr and Commander Reaney from the Burr Pit for their extremely kind words in their October 11th Witch Space News Report. If you're not on board with these two already, you very well should be. Until next time, keep tinkering, Commanders.